Hello everyone, this is Sunny, and today I'll be highlighting the book The Finished Life by Pedro Adeo. Pedro Adeo is the founder of 100X Academy. He is into kingdom entrepreneurs. Kingdom entrepreneurs. So he's a charismatic forward by Bill Johnson, uh, who, we've, who we've highlighted before and will continue to highlight. However, um, I also believe in um, kingdom finances and charismatic Christians are not too shy about talking about finances. A lot of other Christians I found have been, but charismatic Christians are not too shy. And there's a lot of um, misunderstandings around finances and the Bible. So it, let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. Let's have a healthy understanding of uh, finances and uh, the word of God. So um, I'm going to share with Pedro Adeo's, uh, Pedro Adeo's The Finished Life. Uh, by the way, he has an amazing thing going on at 1 100x you should check out some of the links below and uh, uh, find out more about him and what's going on with uh, his ministry all right so the top five takeaways number one people around you need to know your identity people around you need to know your identity now i was a little bit shocked about this one and the way how the way he brought it about but he says you look at jesus's uh, life and birth you have Mary and Joseph having angelic visitations. Uh, you have the shepherds with angelic visitations. You have the, the wise men that we trust were led by God uh, to jo uh, Jesus, uh, Joseph and Mary. And then we have uh, Simeon at the temple that he knew the Messiah was here. And so we have these uh, amazing testimonies, encounters, miracles surrounding Jesus' birth. And Jesus grew up like hearing about these things. And people around him, they knew how, who he was to be, how great he was to be. And Pedro Adeo says, you know what? Uh, we, we need that as well. Uh, we need people around us to, to remind us of, of how we were born, how we were raised, the things that God has called us to, the, the words that are over us, uh, the prophecies or the words, life-giving words that are over us. So uh, people around you need to know your identity, the greatness that God has called us to. If you have people around you that are just constantly calling out the garbage in you or constantly pointing out garbage, constantly feeding you garbage, uh, you know it's not going to help too much in growing. Obviously, there are exceptions, but there needs to be something in there with every great person. Like somebody had to believe in them and, and encourage them through the process. And so let me ask you, the people around you right now, do you have people that know your identity, know how great you are, the greatness uh, that God has for you, um, who he wants you to become. Uh, if you don't, then I encourage you to seek people out who believe in God and the greatness in people that we were made in God's image. Uh, find them, and when you find them, hold on to them. Uh, build a relationship with them and um, find more like them and great things will happen. That's number one. Number two, we were created to solve problems. He says this, uh, a, a watch was created to solve the problem of keeping time. Um, uh, 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 ACs and heaters solve the temperature of the, the uh, solve the temperature problem. Um, uh, cars solve the transportation problem. Okay, uh, people create things to solve something. Okay, uh, God is the same. He created us to solve problems. Uh, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus, okay, to do good works, okay, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Does that make sense? So God created us and the works we were created to do beforehand. So he created both. It's like a, a, a key and a lock. He created both, lock and key. So the question is, what locks were you created to unlock? Because um, I'm just saying this personally, this is a verse that I hold on to dearly, um, that, that I'm not a, a famous pastor <clears throat> yet. I'm just believing that. I'm not well known all over the world <clears throat> yet. Um, I'm, I'm believing that because I'm believing God's words over my life. However, I don't need to be discouraged because there are some people that Billy Graham can reach that 
um, I can't reach, or maybe many, but there's people that I can reach that Billy Graham cannot either. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, why write a Christian book? Because there are people that I'm going to reach that other Christian authors are not going to reach. There are some people only I can reach, and there are some people only you can reach. There are some problems only I can solve. There are some problems only you can solve. And so we need to be encouraged that we were created to solve problems. I get it. We were created to worship and love God, love others, no doubt. But we're just uh, uh, highlighting this part as well, that we are, in, uh, we are created to solve problems. So keep that in mind. Number three, honor protocols to increase influence. Okay, so we're going to be people of influence. Uh, the, something in common that I'm going to say certain Christians and certain businessmen have, okay, is that they both seek to expand and multiply. Christians want to expand um, uh, churches, disciples. We want to make more all over the earth. And businesses, a lot of them, they want to do that as well. They want to expand, franchise, branch out, and they want to network all around the world. A lot of them do. So um, in order to do that, we need to honor protocols. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm going to, I don't know, if you're going to open up a branch of something in like another country, you should know the protocols of that country before you go in and, I don't know, hammer in your like American ways or something. We need to respect the culture uh, uh, where, of wherever we go. Paul says it like this, to the Jew, I became a Jew. To the Gentile, I became a Gentile. You know, he had to make adjustments to who he was talking to and how he talked to people. And so that's what we need to do as well. Honor protocol. Um, don't just go in uh, presumptuously thinking you know exactly what to do. No, 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 no. Ask questions. Find out the protocol of this ministry, of this business, of this region. Find out how they do things there. And to the best of your ability, honor protocol and God will increase uh, your influence. Uh, one example I have is when I was in Korea, I have a, a, a friend. We were teaching in an international Christian school. And he's Indian, Indian American, and uh, he uh, he was handing out tracks, you know, to influence people, gospel tracks on the subway. And uh, when a guy he handed a track to somebody, and, and a guy was shaking his hand and said thank you, uh, this is what they do in Korea. Uh, they make sure to put one hand on their elbow and make it look like it's like a two handshake, a two handshake, two handshake. And this guy, this older gentleman, was like, "Whoa, you're a foreigner, but you know how to like shake hands like that." And that immediately opened up his heart and increased his influence, just like that. And so we want to be respectful of protocol and, and honor protocol to influence others. All right, that's number three. Number four, show and tell what you have to offer. Show and tell what you have to offer. This is how he says it. Speak on the rewards of your product, service, or opportunity and back it up. Speak of the rewards of your product, service, or opportunity and back it up. Uh, that's what Jesus did. He said, this is the kingdom of God, and he backed it up. Yes, yes, he did. He backed it up with, with signs and wonders and people's hearts being changed and transformed. He backed it up. And so he's talking to the entrepreneurs. Hey, man, you have this, this course that's going to solve a problem. You have this product that's going to solve a problem. You have this service that's going to solve a problem. Great. So tell people, tell people about it. Don't be shy about it. If it's going to help people, don't be shy about it. Talk about it and back it up. Uh, you need to give a sample. You need to give a demonstration. Make sure people know that, hey, wow, this is actually uh, working. Uh, this actually works. That's what uh, we are called to do with, with integrity. We're not going to sell garbage. You know what I'm saying? We're going to sell with integrity. And uh, number five, this helps as well. Testimonies tip the scales. Testimonies tip the scales. Now, just know that I told you in advance, this is a kingdom entrepreneur book, uh, not, necessar not necessarily how to grow your inner life uh, book. There are different books for that. But he's using testimonies. And we all know testimonies are powerful. That once we see somebody talking, 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 that's great. But when we see somebody else saying, hey, I took this thing, I did this, and I lost 20 pounds. Okay, that's great. Oh, like I made this much money in this much time using this system. Great. You know what? I learned to uh, book with all these different um, uh, schools or companies, and I had speaking engagements when I followed Pete Vargas's uh, Advance Your Reach. You know what I'm saying? So there are 
uh, testimonies that add power. So here's what he says. Find testimonies. Serve people. Bless people. Share with people. And then when you get testimonies back, hold on to those testimonies and use those testimonies because it's going to help others realize, oh, uh, this guy's not just um, uh, using me as a first-time experiment or something. He's actually done this before. Okay, I hope that makes sense uh, for uh, Kingdom Entrepreneurs. So I got five, 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 five top takeaways. Number one, testimonies tip the scales. Make sure whatever you're doing, have testimonies. Um, if you're helping people overcome blank, make sure you have a testimony of overcoming blank or you've helped people overcome blank. Uh, show and tell what you have to offer. Uh, make sure don't be shy about what you have to offer, especially if it's good and it's going to help people. Uh, number three, honor protocols to uh, increase influence. Whoever you're going to speak to, just understand their context and their setting and be a student, be humble, be ready to learn what their protocols are and you make adjustments as best as possible. Number two, we were created to solve problems. The, 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 the lock and key. We were created to solve problems, so be encouraged that there's something you can do, something you're called to do that nobody else can do, and we need to find out what that is and, and, and go at it. Uh, and number one, last but not least, uh, people around you need to know your identity. Uh, doing flows out of being. And so we need to know our identity. We need to surround ourselves with people who know our identity. And when, uh, and doing is going to flow from being. So do your best to make sure people around you uh, know the greatness that God's called you to. All right. So um, Pedro Adeo, if you're watching this, shout out. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for this book. Um, 100x uh if if you're you're watching this and you haven't read this book come on man this is uh this is pedro adeo you're in 100x make sure you read his book um believe it or not it's not just entrepreneurship he drops a lot of gold in the spiritual aspect as well and so uh don't 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 underestimate this man he has a great calling on his life i will have more for you uh this is my third video now and I'm encouraging you and I'm asking you for likes and shares and comments. I'm open to feedback. If you have books you want highlighted, I'm open to that as well. And uh, if you want to share your top, one of which of your top five was uh, your top takeaway, that will be great as well. Stay tuned for more content and I'll be seeing you soon. Thanks.